Hey guys, it's Tomer from MMOs.com with another quick weekly news recap of all major MMO news and announcements for the week ending February 6th, 2017. This is episode number 81 of the recap, and the first bit of news this week comes from My.com regarding Revelation Online. Our closed beta phase 3 has officially been extended until February 9th, the reason being that My.com felt that the original time frame didn't allow players to reach level 69, the current level cap, and explore the game's high level content. Uh, My.com will also be giving players who buy cash shop currency a 15% bonus when open beta rolls around. Uh, given that this is the third round of closed beta testing and that they were interested in getting players to test uh, late game content, I suspect the open beta is right around the corner. And of course, after open beta, no more wipes. Uh, moving right along, some additional news from My.com. This time, it's about Cloud Pirates. The game is officially launching on Steam Early Access on February 9th. At the same time, Closed Beta 3 ends for Revelation Online. We haven't heard too much about Cloud Pirates since the first round of Closed Beta testing ended at, in December, but now it is coming into uh, Steam Early Access and will be available to pretty much everyone on February 9th. And if you haven't heard of Cloud Pirates, it's a 10v10 PvP ship battling game. Uh, set in the Allods universe. I mean, it is made by the Allods team as well, the same guys behind Allods Online. Uh, next up, we wouldn't have a weekly news recap without something from Black Desert, and this week it's news about the Dark Knight class, and good news at that. The Dark Knight will officially be launching in the Western version of the game sometime next month, so that's sometime in March. Uh, with the Magori expansion live and a brand new class launching soon, there's a lot to keep players busy in Black Desert. And probably much more to keep players busy as more content keeps rolling in. Uh, next up, Terra's latest update, Sword and Horde, is officially live, and it brings with it a revamped Warrior class. And to encourage players to try the new revamped class, Terra is giving players a special uh, in-game reward box for people that reach level 15 by February 14th with the Warrior class that you can actually open that box upon reaching level 65 and you get a ton of cool goodies including a permanent Nightmare Mount, permanent Warrior Weapon Skin, and a bunch of other goodies. So if you're ever curious about playing Warrior in Terra, now is the time to do it, especially because you're getting rewarded to check it out. Up next, probably the biggest news of the week. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online is getting a new expansion pack titled Morrowind, which is set to launch on June 6th. It's a massive expansion as it adds Vardenfell, which is the largest new zone to be added to the Elder Scrolls Online since launch. And given the title of the expansion, uh, much of it does center around Morrowind, though it does take place 700 years before the events of the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. But you'll still be able to experience iconic locations, characters, stories, and much more. But probably the biggest aspect of the update is a brand new class called the Warden. Uh, new classes are always pretty massive in MMORPGs. And uh, the Warden class is the first new class to be added to the game since it launched back in 2014. Beyond that, there is a new PvP mode called Battlegrounds, and actually a lot of other goodies. I do want to talk about the cost structure a bit, because it will cost $40 at launch, and even if you're a subscriber, you still have to pay for the expansion. Players who do pre-order will get a bonus, and you can, even, you can buy a collector's edition for a bit more, but ultimately this is all launching on June 6th. Wow. Moving along, a bit of sad news actually. Club Penguin is officially shutting down on March 29th, 2017. And the game's been running for a little bit over 11 years now. And I know, obviously, most of my audience doesn't really play this game, but it's an MMO that was designed uh, for kids and actually helped introduce a lot of kids to the MMO genre. It's obviously aimed at kids 7 to 11 or so, but it's sad to see it go because it ran for 11 years and really helped broaden the MMO genre. It got a lot of kids interested in MMOs, which is why I say it's sad to see it go. I never actually played it too much. I played more Neopets back in the day. I was a Neopets kid, not a Club Penguin kid. But uh, it is shutting down, but there will be a mobile version to replace it, but it will not be the same thing. Club Penguin Island will be replacing the PC version of Club Penguin, but uh, rest in peace, Penguins. In some more positive news, Ubisoft's upcoming hack and slash game For Honor is entering open beta on February 9th, and it'll last until February 12th across all platforms. Uh, the game itself fully launches on February 14th, but you can all check out the game uh, for free during that open beta period. Uh, it will be a full price game, so it will cost $59.99 at launch. I know Ubisoft held a closed beta for the game a couple weeks ago, and not everyone was invited, but the good thing about open betas is that everyone can check it out now and decide if they want to buy it. I actually haven't played it yet, so I'm going to check it out during that open beta period. Expect a first look. I'm moving right along, some news for Guild Wars 2. They released a new trailer this last week, which shows off and announces the fourth episode of the Living World Season 3, Head of the Snake update. Uh, this is actually all launching tomorrow on February 7th, so if you do play Guild Wars, awesome time to hop back in and see all that new content. Uh, Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns is 50% off from now until February 8th, so it gives you a chance to get the game at half price. Uh, remember guys, the base game is free and you don't have to pay to play, but if you want the expansion content, you do have to pay, and it is a one-time purchase. Up next, Neverwinter officially announced their latest expansion pack called The Cloaked Ascendery, which is set to launch on PC on February 21st. So it is the latest expansion to Neverwinter. 
Uh, the, the console versions should be coming probably a few months after. They're usually always a bit behind, unfortunately. In fact, there's no release date for the console version just yet. All we know is the console version will be coming later this year. But the new expansion itself will be taking place in the Rivers District, a new adventure zone, and features a new high-end dungeon called the Spellplay Caverns, a new skirmish mission, and a bunch of other tweaks to the actual game. And a bit of data for those curious, Neverwinter still averages about 2,200 players online at any given time on Steam alone, not counting the ARC uh, platform's player base, so it's still doing really well. Next up, a bit of news for Diablo 3. We don't really mention Diablo 3 too much in these news videos, but patch 2.5 in the PTR is a big one, as it introduces a new tier of legendary items called Primal Ancient Weapons. So players who get legendary weapons have a chance of rolling them and seeing if they are Primal Ancients rather than regular Ancients, so they do get better stats that way. But a new form of RNG will keep players entertained for quite a while. Uh, also included is uh, the ability for players to save up to 5 builds at a time using the game's armory, which is a quality of life update. But, well, about that RNG, so the RNG will keep players uh, interested, probably for a while. Up next, a bit of news for mobile game. I know how much you guys love mobile games, but uh, Fire Emblem Heroes is officially out on Android and iOS. It is a Nintendo-developed uh, mobile game, so it's worth mentioning. It is a hero collector, but it does have some actual gameplay. I played it briefly, and it's, it's not bad. If you like Fire Emblem, it's worth checking out. Plus, it has some actual tactical gameplay, but unfortunately, it does have an autoplay feature. But the autoplay feature won't do you any good in 1v1 PvP, because your opponents won't be dumb. I'm curious to see how Nintendo will do with Fire Emblem Heroes. I'm still waiting for Nintendo to finally release a, a traditional Pokemon game on mobile. If they do that, they'll make so much money. But nothing on that just yet. Moving right along, a bit of fun news from RuneScape. Uh, Jagex, the company behind RuneScape, uh, added a new RuneScape murder mystery for Amazon Alexa devices. So if you have an Amazon Echo or any other Amazon Alexa supported devices, you can actually play through a murder mystery with voice chat. So Amazon Alexa will basically be talking to you, telling you a story, and it'll pause to give you a moment to respond what you want to do in that story. The video you're seeing in the background is, of course, just videos of RuneScape, but it actually is a really novel idea. It's just a fun thing Jagex did. So if you play RuneScape and you have an Alexa device, might as well check it out. Our um, next bit of interesting news that Matt published on MMOs.com last week. Uh, Snail Games USA apparently bought Studio Wildcard, developers of ARK, back in December of 2015. And nobody really knew about it. So that's the reason why Snail Games has been publishing a whole bunch of ARK-based games in China. We talked about all those ARK games in China, games like PixArk, ARK Go, and even ARK Survival Evolved in China. And we were wondering why Snail Games is publishing all these games around ARK. But now we know it's because they actually bought the studio that makes them. And the only reason this actually came to light was there was a lawsuit surrounding the founder of Studio Wildcard. And when he was sued, a lot of court documents ended up revealing this bit of information. So yeah, Snail Games owns the developers of ARK. And they're also making Dark and Light, so they're making two competing products. I don't think it's a problem, but it's still interesting that Snail Games owns developers of ARK. Next up, a bit of news from a company called Art Plant, and they actually unexpectedly launched Entropy this last week, almost out of nowhere. Uh, the game itself has been in uh, early access since December 10th of 2013, and all of a sudden, it just launched into full release almost unexpectedly. Uh, the game costs 10 bucks, and it is a space MMO. Unfortunately, this one might be worth avoiding because it got mostly negative Steam reviews, and there seems to be less than 5 players online, so not much of an MMO when you can't get an audience. But it's interesting because it just suddenly launched after getting very minimal updates. I guess they wanted to see if they can make some money, because it does cost $9.99. Uh, graphically, it does look decent, but it's going to be hard to get into with such a small player base. Uh, speaking of low player based games, uh, Spell Gear actually just went free to play this last week as well. The game used to be buy to play and cost 20 bucks, but they decided to increase their player base that free to play was the way to go. Uh, it's a hardcore PvMORPG that has both open PvP and mobile like arenas. Bit of a unique mix. But before players get too confused, it is a traditional open world MMO, but it does have a MOBA PvP mode built in. Unfortunately though, the game is also not very popular at the moment, averaging about 5 or so players online. Hopefully the numbers do pick up, because Matt had good things to say about the game's uh, core combat. I may do a first video for this one relatively soon. Next up, a bit of news came out about Age of Wushu 2, which were unveiled by a Chinese media site 17173 in an interview. Apparently the game's producer Zhu Zenhu, which I probably pronounced horribly, talked a bit about the game's gameplay mechanics. Uh, namely, there will be no main quest or dungeons. Uh, Age of Wushu 2 will very much be a sandbox, so they aren't going to craft quests or dungeons. And uh, unlike the original Age of Wushu, life skills or crafting skills will be completely open, so players can experiment with all of them at once, rather than picking and sticking with one. It will very much be a sandbox game, but they still emphasize it will still be a, a, a Wuxi, Wuxia MMORPG, so... Sounds interesting, and I kinda wanna play it based on the description, but we'll have to wait because there is no release date just yet. 
Next up, a small bit of news from Dirty Bomb. The game's developer, Splash Damage, are actually ditching Nexon as the game's publisher and will be self-publishing Dirty Bomb going forward. Uh, not too much is expected to change right away, but they will be implementing a new anti-cheat system to combat hackers and some other changes going forward. So it's interesting to see that they are ditching Nexon, but for the core gameplay, it's not really going to change. It's just they're self-publishing now, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, the game still averages about 700 players on Steam, so it's still doing quite well. The next and last bit of news this week is that Line of Sight officially launches on Steam as a free-to-play title. It used to be available for free on GameAndGame.com, but it costs money on Steam for some reason. But now they fixed that and it is free-to-play on Steam itself. Now, we did do a, a Sunday Funday video for Line of Sight. It's not bad. It used to be called Combat Arms Line of Sight, but they dropped the Combat Arms name. It's a tr traditional tactical shooter and it was kind of fun, so we'll see how Line of Sight does. Anyway, guys, that's it for MO News this week. Uh, make sure to check us out tomorrow for the podcast. Later, guys.